Traffic lights, risky business, and Watergate are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is August 5th, 2022. It is the 217th day of the year. We got 148 days left. It's your 31st Friday and your 32nd week and the 46th day of summer. You got 48 days till fall almost midway point. Today is International Traffic Light Day. Every year on August 5th, International Traffic Light Day highlights the importance of the traffic light. It's also the day that commemorates the installation of the first signal system. Did you grow up in a small town or a rural town? If so, you may have only grown up with one traffic light or none at all. Small towns can usually get by with just stop signs. Yeah, you know, they're pretty important. You really don't pay attention because normally they're stopping you and you hate them. That's the only time they really come into your brain. But traffic lights are very important. In 1912, a police officer in Salt Lake City, Utah, installed a wooden box with a red and green light on a pole and switched it back and forth manually. But some people do dispute where the actual first traffic light was. Some claim in 1868, a traffic device in London helped people know when to stop and when to use caution. All right, let's see what else. August 5th has given us. 1861, the American Civil War. In order to help pay for the war effort, the United States government levies the first income tax as part of the Revenue Act of 1861. 3% of all incomes over $800 is the new tax. It was rescinded in 1872. And apparently we got it right back. Taxes are like an addiction to governments. You know, once they get it in their system, it's hard to shake it. 1962, American actress Marilyn Monroe is found dead at her home of a drug overdose. We just talked about her yesterday. She actually died on the 4th, but wasn't discovered till the next day on August 5th. 1963, the Cold War. The United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union signed the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. 1964, the Vietnam War. Operation Pierce Arrow. American aircraft from carriers Ticonderoga and Constellation bombed North Vietnam in retaliation for strikes against U.S. destroyers in the Gulf of Tonkin. 1974, Vietnam War, the U.S. Congress places a $1 billion limit on military aid to South Vietnam. Also in 1974 on this day, Watergate scandal. President Richard Nixon, under orders from the U.S. Supreme Court, releases the smoking gun tape recorded on June 23, 1972, clearly revealing his actions in covering up and interfering in the investigation into the Watergate break-ins. His political support vanishes completely. 1981, President Ronald Reagan fires 11,359 striking air traffic controllers who ignored his order for them to return to work. This was a big to-do. Two days earlier, on August 3rd, almost 13,000 air traffic controllers went on strike after negotiations with the federal government fell apart. The air traffic controllers, or PATCO, were looking for a $10,000 raise and a shortened work week. They felt they were underpaid and overworked. Now, they were asking for $10,000 more. In today's money, that's about asking for a $32,000 raise. At the time, the average air traffic controller was making about $40,000, so they were asking for quite a bit of money. It is a very stressful job, and I can honestly see them asking for the shorter work week, but asking for both of them, that seems to be a little much. Now, I'm saying that from an outsider's point of view. I've never done the job, but it just seems like a little much. So part of the deal when you become an air traffic controller is you take an oath and you sign a contract, and part of that oath and contract is you do not go on strike. Now, that didn't stop Patco from having plenty of sick outs over the years where like half the employees call out sick and it just disrupts the whole air traffic in the United States. So this strike was against everything they signed up for and it really hurt the United States. So Ronald Reagan, two days later, said, you go back to work like your contract says, or you're going to lose your job, which he was perfectly in his right to do. There are certain jobs that can't go on strike. Fire departments, police departments, the military, the United States Congress, even though I think they've been on strike for over 50 years. So a lot of people think this was a really bad move by Ronald Reagan and he was overstepping. But, you know, that's an opinion. He was in his right and he could legally do this. But should he have? And on August 5th, when Ronald Reagan stepped out of the White House and up to that podium, he said, go back to work or lose your job. Then he went on to read the oath that they take when they take the job. And it says very clearly you will not go on strike. You agree to this. After Ronald Reagan's order, about 1,300 air traffic controllers went back to work. The rest were fired. 
In addition, Ronald Reagan declared lifetime ban on the rehiring of strikers by the Federal Aviation Administration. On August 17th, the FAA began accepting applications for new air traffic controllers. On October 22nd, the Federal Labor Relations Authority decertified PATCO, and they were dissolved. So, they busted the union. Movies released on August 5th. 1983 Risky Business. This was the first movie that kind of made Tom Cruise a star. It was a pretty good movie. It was interesting. It's about a Chicago teenager who's looking for some fun while his parents are out of town. One thing leads to another and he runs into some problem. I won't spoil it for you, but it is interesting. Interesting piece of trivia about this. This movie was done by Geffen Film Company. Back in the day, there was Geffen Records that let all kinds of great bands get their thing on. But Geffen Records, for a few years there, decided they were going to get into the movie business. They did have some good movies. Personal Best, Risky Business, Lost in America, After Hours, which was phenomenal, Little Shop of Horrors, Beetlejuice, Men Don't Leave, Defending Your Life, Last Boy Scout, which was interesting, M. Butterfly, Interview with the Vampire, Joe's Apartment, Michael Collins, which is good, Beavis and Butthead, Do America, and The Butcher Boy. And then they kind of folded it up into MTV. But they only made movies from 1982 to 1998. Born on August 5th, 1930, Neil Armstrong, American astronaut, aerospace engineer, test pilot, and professor who became the first person to set foot on the moon on July 21st, 1969. He spent eight days, 14 hours, 12 minutes, and 30 seconds in space. He took his first flight at the age of five, not in space, in the air, when he and his father took a ride on a Ford tri-motor plane in Warren, Ohio. And he got the bug that day. Over 450 million people, which at the time was more than one-eighth of the Earth's population, watched him step foot on the moon. He died on August 25th, 2012, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Died on August 5th, 2002, we lost Chick Hearn, play-by-play announcer for the LA Lakers from 1965 to 2002. Yes, the year he died is the year he quit working. During the summer of 2002, Hearn suffered a fall at his home in Encino, California. He struck his head, causing serious injury. Three days later, on August 5, 2002, he died from his injury. He was 85 years old. He was interned at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, next to his son Gary and his daughter Samantha. Chick and Marge would have celebrated their 64th wedding anniversary on August 13, 2002. Little piece of trivia about the great Chick Hearn. He missed two games in all those years. He was the announcer for the Lakers. He had broadcasted 3,338 consecutive Laker games starting on November 21st, 1965. It was weird. I watched a game years after he had quit. And it, it didn't sound the same. It wasn't, it didn't feel right. I felt like I was cheating on someone just by watching the game because Chick Hearn wasn't there. What's funny, as a kid, I couldn't stand his announcing. It was just so boring to me as a kid. And as I got older, I started to appreciate it. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.